welcome to So Much to Talk About. We're here at the Borders Bookstore, Columbus Circle, to promote uh, Coach P. Carroll's new book called, no, his first book called Win Forever. And uh, it's my pleasure to have the co-author, who is his quarterback's coach at USC, University of Southern California, Mr. Yogi Roth. Pleasure to have you on the show. Oh, thanks for having me. It's exciting. And talk about the, the entire process of writing uh, the book with Coach Carroll. He's, of course, his energy, enthusiasm is second to none. So uh, talk about how that inspired you to really be able to have the words flow. Sure. It was an incredible challenge, but one that, as a competitor, you, you love to be a part of, right? And when you look at what Coach Carroll has done is what my job as a co-author is to capture his words. And everything you see basically came out of his mouth. And, you know, I would... I would guess that he's different than most celebrities that want to write a book because he wrote a ton on this book. It's not like he just verbalized it to me and I cranked it out on a computer. He wrote a lot. He's got a great um, a head and a heart for writing. He's very creative. So it was a fun process for both of us and for it to kind of come full circle to kind of have this book now and be in New York and take this tour around the country and do it for the reasons of giving back to the city of Los Angeles and its, and its communities is something that you know, I couldn't be more proud of. That's right, and talk about a better LA, um, found, a better LA foundation, which uh, Coach Cow started with his daughter uh, Jamie. Talk about how, how that's really growing, and how we get in so much, so many of our youth to to buy into that vision, that positive vision. Yeah, well, a better LA, its goal is simple: is to stop violence from within. So I could come to New York and try to save every community under the sun, but I can't do a good, good enough job, or as good a job as someone who grew up in New York. And that's what we're finding in LA. So what we've done is we've you know, raised money by writing books, by doing a variety of different projects, having very special donors, people that want to donate some, some money to these communities. And we find intervention workers that are from Watts, that are from Comp, that are from a variety of these neighborhoods. They go inside these communities and become peacekeepers on the streets. And it's a pretty simple, logical, you know, answer for the problem, but it's one that has never been used. I mean, the police force in L.A., 32 years, they use the process of using money from the outside to try to fix the problem, arresting their way out of the problem, and it didn't work. In came Coach Carroll with his vision, with his concept of, let's just stop violence. It's not that hard. Let's just figure out, you know, what do you want to do in life? Let's set the vision and let's go do this. And he took the same principles that won seven straight Pac-10 championships and took it right out on the streets in Los Angeles, and he's doing incredibly well there. And talk about um, like the one thing, the one antidote while writing this bo book with Coach Carroll that stands out for you. Well, the one antidote would have to be that, uh, you know, if you want to win forever, you got to always compete, and and that is is the line. Now, the, the most beautiful thing about it, when we sat down, we set one simple concept out for us, and it was the same vision he set for his program, the same vision he has for Better LA, the same vision we have in our relationship, same one I've you know adopted in my own life is we wanted to do things better than they've ever been done before. Now, granted, that may never be possible, but if you set the bar that high and that becomes your normal, that every day you come into work, whether it's to write this book, whether it's to coach quarterbacks or lead an NFL franchise, you're coming in with that mentality, that motivation, and that allows you to get to this place where you perform at a very high level and one that is very common to you, and it isn't different. So when you saw USC players play in front of 100,000 people, it didn't shock them. When you see Seattle playing in the playoffs this year, you know, contending for a Super Bowl in the next few years, it's not going to shock them. They expect it because they set the bar so high and the goal to do it better than it's ever been done before. And that's our idea with this book. You played a wide out at University of Pittsburgh. Uh, now talk about how that experience helped you be able to, to have a coaching position with Coach Carroll at USC a couple years down the line. Sure. Well, you know, I walked down to the University of Pittsburgh and got a scholarship after my second season. So my mentality has always been one where, you know, I want to, Prove somebody wrong. Yeah, you know, I can go play Division One football. But while I was there, his son was also a tight end. His name was Brennan Carroll, and who ended up coaching tight ends at USC for about seven seasons. I believe was their recruiting coordinator. I set the trend with being the first college coach to have a Facebook page, That's which right. related to a lot of the recruits coming in. Exactly. So basically, what I did is I used to go out in the off season to USC and I'd work out with their players, learn from Pete. We'd play basketball, get in the water, just hang out in Southern California. First and foremost, I fell in love with L.A. and the beach because when you grow up in Pennsylvania, you can't help but not fall in love with the coast. But on top of that, uh, coach had an opening. He saw that I was, you know, a competitor and uh, gave me an opportunity to do it. I came in as the lowest position on the staff and ended up kind of climbing my way up a little bit. Um, and it was fun. I, mean, I got to learn a lot of football, but more importantly, I got to really learn a basis of foundation of philosophy. Right? When you coach at SC, you have a chance to go to a variety of different schools, you know, pretty quickly, and, it, and it's a launching pad to other schools. I never wanted to leave because I knew it was so special what was occurring that what was being around him. You know, he, you have the ability to not only learn his philosophy, but he challenges you to learn your own. Okay, okay what's your vision? What's your style? What's your, what's your vision? What's your philosophy? And if you can't answer those, 
Well, you better stay inside and continue to learn and continue to develop it, and that's exactly what we got to do, and that's what any reader will get out of this book. You're gonna, have, you're gonna be challenged. Do you have a philosophy? Can you say it in 25 words or less? Do you have a vision? Do you have a theme? Do you have a style? Who are you as an individual? And that self-discovery process is the first 70 pages of the book. And it's not that long of a book, but the, that's how important that aspect is. And as a coach and a member of his staff and his friend, he challenged me to do the same. And, and that was something that I'll forever be grateful for. Talking about how you walked on in University of Pittsburgh uh, team and then was a scholarship player the next year. It's very similar to how Coach Carroll was only 110 pounds in high school, you know, and wanted to play football, and, and he had to really fight and claw and be determined to do it. So I see those similarities, definitely. I, I think uh, we, we got a lot of similarities. You know, we get along great. Uh, we're about the same size. We both like basketball. We love the water. And we're both competitors. And, uh, you know, I see that in him and, and try to draw as much as I can. And, and you know, maybe he sees a, a younger version of himself in, in, a, in a few aspects as well. And I think that's what sparked our relationship. And so what allowed this book to be relatively easy to write because I understood what he was trying to say and he trusted me with, with his voice. Yeah, I gotta say, um, great work and, and uh, you know, wonderful messages that you conveyed to the audience. And I thank you for being on so much to talk Coming about, down. you know, giving, giving New York City love, definitely. Yeah, yeah, man. I got a brother and sister in New York, so I'm back here all the time. Oh, okay, great. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.